Today's show is pre recorded. I sure will. Good morning, everybody. <coughs> Excuse me. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. <laughs> One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Man, oh man, oh man. Something going on real good today. You ought to feel blessed today. The fact that God woke you up and gave you another opportunity. You know, every day you wake up is another chance. It's a chance for all of us to get better, to get it right, to get on the right path. To stop heading the wrong way. Every day you wake up, that's your opportunity. See, because he's going to keep waking you up because he has a plan for you. You know, I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, I don't I don't I don't know when he makes his call and, and, and you know, who gets called home when I can't explain it. I don't have that answer. I'm not him. I'm not God. I don't claim to be. I don't I don't understand it all sometimes. But God has an amazing way. But as long as he's waking you up, I do know this. God ain't through with you yet. God has a plan for you. Your job is to identify, identify the plan. You know, that's that's clearly what I need for you to do. You know, um, oftentimes the thing that you're looking for, it's right there inside of you. You know, I I can't tell you how many people I meet. Mr. Harvey, Mr. Harvey, can I speak to you for a minute? Yeah, man, what, what's up with you? Um, man, I was just wondering, man, I've been trying to, and I wanted to know, man, can you give me a good agent? Can you give me a good uh, lawyer? Can you give me a good... Now, look, if you got some legal problems, I understand you're going to need some help right there. But the majority of questions I get asked is about their future, about their place in this world, about their mission, about what they're trying to do, how they're trying to figure out, and then the how to go about doing it. But the answer I must remind all of you is always within yourself. It starts right there. See, a lot of people burn up a lot of time looking around, trying to find someone. If I could just meet them, if I could just get on her show, man, if all if I could just get to his show, I beat and made it. That's not that's not necessarily the case. Because, see, just like every time you put your put your uh, faith in a person or an event or occurrence or or some type of thing that you imagine yourself being in there, and that'll do it for you. Imagine of all the people who've made it without. You know, I look at everybody talking, about, man, if I could get on so and so show, that'll do it for me, man. Somebody else got on that show and they blew up, man. If I could just make it to that show. Do you know how many people have made it? without that. So see, when you start 
focusing in on what your idea of how to make it is. And your idea of how to make it does not include your relationship with God. You're spinning your wheels. Man, it's a vicious cycle you're in now. And I'm asking everybody to get out of that cycle. Get out of looking for someone and something. The answer is within you. God resides in you. That burning thing that you have that you just can't get out your head, that's a seed. God planted that there. That's a seed. It needs watering, nurturing, fertilizing. That's what it needs. It it didn't it don't ever say, man, I need that other person right there. Now, there are people you will meet that will compliment you, and I can assure you that God will put you in the right place at the right time. I'm almost certain that God will introduce you to everybody you need to be introduced to to make it to wherever it is you all are trying to get to. I'm talking about you and God now. But the moment you take it into your own hands and you make the decision as to who you got to get to, you've just clouded and muddied the waters see god's plan for you don't really need your help Uh uh-oh it needs your attention it needs your focus it needs your faith and it needs your hard work but he needs you to listen needs you to listen more than anything listen keep the faith and be willing to work your tail off I don't know how you think it can happen any other way. But then again, I do because I tried to make it another way. So I had to come to the conclusion. Hey, man, listen here, dog, this ain't working for you. You got to get some more God here, man. Listen to me. The answer was always within me. The, the moment I sat down with myself and told myself the truth that, hey, partner, you ain't really all that. Hey, partner, regardless as to what people are seeing and stuff, you ain't happy. Hey, partner, this really ain't about you. Hey, partner, you really ain't all that good at this. God is keeping you for a reason. Okay, hold up, Steve. Quit tripping. What I need to do. I just started talking to myself, and then I heard uh, Bishop Jakes say a couple of things. Then I was watching TV. I heard Joel Osteen say a couple of things. And I went, wow, man. Okay, cool. That's pretty slick. I'm going to try that. And when I did it, it changed my life. I am telling you, man, it has been God this whole time. And the God has been residing inside of me, just like the God resides on the inside of you. That's him talking to you, telling you, man, you ought to get it together. Man, making you feel bad. It's sending you on guilt trips. You knowing you wrong. You out there wrong. And something telling you you ought not do it. Here's how you know it's God. And Bishop Ulmer taught me this in his book. He's got, um, I can't think of the name of it right now, but it's a really good book. But it says in there, man, Bishop Ulmer was talking in this book, and he was saying, the way you know it's not God's voice is if it, it ain't no sin in it. See, how many times have you made up in your mind, I'm going to show this person or I'm going to show that person or I'm going to get this person back. You hurt me, I'm going to hurt you. You know, the Lord don't like ugly, I'll show you. Well, the Lord don't like ugly, but nowhere in that does it say for you to go show them. It doesn't say that. See, so when you strike out on that mission, you know, um, the God knows in my heart I loved you, but I got to do this because you did me wrong. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ain't got nothing to do with God right there. You can take him out of it. If it's God has no sin in it. So anytime somebody come to me talking about the Lord told me to do this to you and that's the only reason I'm doing it. You need to get yourself right with God. I heard all them threats right there. That ain't God talking to me through you. What are you crazy? If it's God, it has no sin in it. So you got to be careful, man, when you're talking to people. We're going to go down here and we're going to do this because this is the right thing to do. If it has something wrong going on, then it can't be the right thing to do. Took me a minute to learn that one. But please get that through your head so you can quit spinning yourself around. And remember, everything you're looking for is within you. It's all right there. Quit wasting your time looking around all the time. Go to your God, man. Talk to him. Go to that spirit that's on the inside of you that's calling you. Stop letting people shake your tree. At the end of the day, somebody going to be right, somebody going to be wrong. All right, y'all. We're going to have a good one today. Tripping a little bit. 
going through something. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. One, two, one, two, three, go. Steve Harvey Morning Show, yes, what it is. Steve Harvey Morning Show, that's what it is. Steve Harvey Morning Show, that's what it is. I am Steve Harvey. But this show would be nothing without the following people. Ladies and gentlemen, Shirley Strawberry. The Dream Team. Good morning, Steve. The infamous Carla Farrell. Good morning, Dream Team. I like it. I like it. <laughs> the comma, Junior Kill Spates. Morning, everybody. Morning, uh, Glad to be here. The king of pranks himself, Nephew Tommy. In the building, Uncle Steve. Top, top, top. The night. Morning. Right. Oh, yeah. What you singing, Steve? No, no. Because you know, you will start with a song. Yeah, you'll start yeah, I, with I started and didn't realize I didn't know. And I rise. And then I know I don't know nothing else. And that ain't the melody, so I just went on <laughs> cut it off. You know, but I do rise, you know. Yeah. In the morning, thank the good Lord. Yeah. Uh, Amen. 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 Uh-huh. Amen. Uh-huh. Amen. Well, sing us one of your favorites. What you want to hear? Just give me. Uh, let's see. Let's do some uh, temptations. You don't do them very often. I was about to cut you off. Boom, doom, boom, doom, 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 boom, doom, 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 I look out my window and each day she passes by. Mm -hmm. Make it your own. I say to myself, you know what? I'm such a lucky (laughs) guy. (laughs) To what, boy? Come on. Uh. To have a girl like her is what to you, boy? Truly a dream come true. This is very young, Kirk Frank. How lucky are you, man? <laughs> Out of all the fellows in the world, what about it? She belongs to me. But you know you're tripping, don't you? Because it was just my imagination. Yeah, that's it. All right. All right. That's my jam right uh-huh. there. But I tell you what, man, I've never seen anybody do it better than them damn boys to men. Yeah, they did a great remake of that song. Oh, of that they classic. remake of that song yeah. is so dope. They really, they're harmony. I hate to tell you this, I actually like it better. Wow. Yeah. Uh-huh. No, dog. No, I actually like it better than The Temptations. Yeah, I actually do. I hate to tell you that. Them boys, Look boys to men. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I I actually like it better because it got digitized and the sound got a little bit more brighter and clearer, you know. It wasn't just that snare. The music behind it was dope. That's why. And then Wanye Nim, them damn boys can sing. Wanye Nim. Yeah. All right. That was my frat brother, Wanye (laughs) Nim. Coming up at 32 minutes after the hour, uh, an old friend, Sister Odell, will be in the building right Uh, after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's Woman Crush Wednesday, and our girl, Sister Odell, is in the building. I guess we're saying that's our crush. She's our crush for today. Girl, yeah, crushing on her, Sister Odell. Mm-mm. Took me a long time to get there. <laughs> Be quiet. Hey, you. I am talking about Jesus <laughs> is the one. Mm-hmm. He is my friend. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Good, good morning, morning. Good, morning. Good, 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 good. Boys and girls, boys and girls. What is y'all talking about today? What's this lot going on? You know it's there's so much stuff. happening Trump, in the world. Trump and Mo Trump. Yeah, mm. you know our president has COVID-19. 
He went to the hospital for three days, came out, mm. tried to let the world know that he's fine, he's strong, he's Superman, and he's mm. in the White House. <laughs> Seems like everyone else. Well, Superman ain't never went to the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> this Facts. is true. Facts. Uh-huh. Hey, this is no deal. <laughs> Superman with his cheeseburger eating self need to be careful. Mm-hmm. And put your mask on. You got full blown COVID. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, the doctors ma'am. say he's not out of the woods yet, sister. He ain't Brown. out of the woods. He don't need to be out of that mask either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just sitting up in here breathing. I tell you what, if I was at security, you know, when he did that uh, victory lap in the uh, car and yes, went back ma'am. to the hotel, he'd have uh-huh. drove his damn self. <laughs> 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 Better I don't get locked up in here with you. That's right. That's, that's right. What sister, that's know. what uh, Steve said. It, 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 old as I'm here is, everything I got is pre existing. <laughs> I ain't had nothing new in 35 years. <laughs> yes, ma'am. You know, his own son, Donald Jr., said he was acting like a crazy man when he did Everybody that. Everybody know he acting like if you, if you If you interview Melania, you really learn something. <laughs> <laughs> well, she has. I think too. if you ask that little boy, Byron, he really tell the truth. Mm-hmm. Byron. Mm-hmm. Yes. Byron, Byron, what, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And you Brandon, know, shut, whatever his name is. Uh, the president shut down the stimulus talks that they were having about Ain't that selfish? Of, yeah, so said, selfish. Yeah. You know, yeah. he talking about he, he going to shut it down until after the election. So if I don't after get in, wins. I don't care what y'all do. Right. That's horrible. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I can't Basically believe people are still trying to vote for him. Ain't yes, he ma'am. sorry? Mm-hmm. Yes, man. He the worst. I ain't never seen nobody like this in the White House. You know, you know, Ron on them and all of them was, you know, Richard. Ron Reagan. Ron was fine. You know, I knew his daddy, you know. Uh, oh, oh, did you? What, what was his name? I didn't. They used to I call him Pag- Reagan the Pagan. <laughs> I saved him personally. I went down there. Okay, anyway. Oh. No, I saved him personally because he was down there as a pagan. You know, he uh-huh. had all them uh, stars drawn in the dirt and everything, lighting candles. I went over there and kicked all that over. <laughs> <laughs> Be drawing no hexagons and octagons and all this in the flow. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Try Jesus. Oh, Didn't man. work with Ronald Reagan's son, though. You know, Ronald Reagan's son is an atheist. He's a what? Oh, yes, man. Aphus, he, he don't believe in the Lord. Yeah, he, he do the commercial. Yes. Yeah. yeah, he got a uh-huh. whole group called Freedom Something. Mm. Religious Freedom Something. They stupid. Oh, yeah. Mm. Right. They what? Mm. They stupid. <laughs> don't believe in the Lord. Okay. <laughs> Get the COVID and see what happens. Uh, so, Sister Odell, are you planning on voting? Mm. I, I, I'm sure you are. You Girl, know. as soon as I can, I early vote. Oh, good. Yeah. Good. I paid yes, the price. Ma'am. I was with everybody. I was with Rosa Parks fighting for voting. I was with Nat Turner. I was with Frederick Douglass. I've been with everybody voting. You <laughs> doggone right, I'm voting. Yes, right. ma'am. That's I right. know that's right. Uh-huh. Go ahead, Sister Odell. A- anything you want to say to our uh, our listeners about voting? Please we only get have out and vote. Days. People have saved, they gave their life up so y'all could go down there to the polls and vote. And you're going to sit your stupid tail at the house talking about your vote don't count. You're damn right it don't count if you don't go down there and have them count it. That's right. Kind of ignorant mess is this right here. That's right, sister. That's Walking right. up Tell and down them. the street with all them Black Lives Matter signs, it don't matter nothing if you don't vote. Yes, That's it. Right. Keep it 100. Facts. 27 Makes days Makes me left. sick. 27 mm-hmm. days. What is you waiting on? That's mm-hmm. right. You're going to mess around and do four that. more years of this fool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, can we switch gears here a moment, Sister uh-huh. Adele? You, you know who Dolly Parton is, right? The country singer? Sure, I love Dolly. Woo. Yes, ma'am. Well, she's about to uh, celebrate her 75th birthday. Mm-hmm. 75th birthday. And she's considering, Sister Odell, a return to Playboy magazine. Why oh. not? I used to date her daddy. You, what? Huh? I not used to date uh, her, her daddy. Who is her daddy? Who? Dolly Parton's daddy? Mm-hmm. Beg you. <laughs> Beg you. Beg you. <laughs> <laughs> he was something else. Beg you, boy. <laughs> what was his name again, Sister Odell? Beg you. <laughs> Beg your pardon. Okay. 
Donna <laughs> gonna go back to Playboy. Yes, ma'am. Yes. She did it in uh, 1978, and she's turning 75, <laughs> so she's thinking about making a return to pose for Playboy. She oh, sure she... is pretty, you know. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'd go, but you know, I did Playboy years back. <laughs> no, <laughs> we never knew this, Sister Odell. Yeah, no, Wait a minute. Was this Playboy. is breaking news. This is what? Uh-huh. Wait, uh-huh. hold. Excuse me? Uh-huh. This was, it was way it was before fo- you were saved. Well, no, it was before they called it Playboy. Oh, what they, what they call it before Playboy? Attaboy. <laughs> you a mess. You a mess. I posed it I posed it. I posed it in Attaboy magazine. Attaboy. Okay. Yeah, I wasn't naked or nothing. I was riding a horse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, was a, it, was an, it was an equestrian magazine called Attaboy. <laughs> All right, Whoa, sister boy. All right, we'll be back with the nephew with Run That Prank Back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, Miss Ann is standing by with today's national news. And in entertainment news, Trey Songs has COVID. And Rick Ross has a million-dollar smile. But right now, come on, Sister Odell. Do what you do. Well... <laughs> It, it it don't give me much pleasure in doing this, but he is the king of it, you know. He's the king of prank. He's good at it. Why we need to do one? What? He's so good. Why don't we do two freshens every day? Because some people miss the ones the day before. I think that's the logic behind that, Sister Odell. Well, what about the ones that's heard it already? <laughs> well, they get the pleasure of hearing it again. It was so good. They hear it twice. Mm, he good. He ought to do two freshens. Is all I'm saying. You know, but here we go, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you that missed it, which I'm assuming must be very few, <laughs> mm, I heard it. Here he is with the return of the pranks. <laughs> well, this is something you would like, Sister Odell. This right here is the church usher. The church usher. Oh, okay. Well, I guess I'll pay attention. <laughs> Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach a sister. This is Sister. How you doing? Uh, I, good. Good evening to you, ma'am. I don't mean to be giving you a call this late in the evening, but I, mm-hmm. I am uh, the new youth minister. I haven't. Uh, uh, my name is Sean Williams over at wait, Missionary Baptist Church, which my understanding. Wait, 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 wait. What do you mean, new youth minister? What happened to? Uh, he's no longer with the church anymore, ma'am. Well, I, I'm I'm not at, at liberty to speak up on that, but but I, what I was get, doing is getting around and making sure I I met everyone because I haven't oh. met everyone yet, and I wanted to reach out to um oh my Jesus. everyone at the church. But listen, let me let me get down to some more business it's because terrible. I've I, I've spoken with the pastor. Uh, um, we spoke. Bishop, that's what Bishop, baby. Yes, Bishop. Yes, ma'am. I know you're new, but it's Bishop. Uh huh. Okay. I, I spoke with him on yesterday, and mm-hmm. we have narrowed some things down of a few changes we're going to be making at the church. And what we want to do is um, one of the major subjects that have come up, Sister mm-hmm. is that mm-hmm. we're wanting you, if at all possible, and, and the deacons were in on this meeting as well, but wanting you to change your attitude when people are coming in and you're seating them. From my understanding, it's gotten to the point where they think you're wait a, minute, a little wait, bit— Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Thank you. Y'all had a meeting on me. Well, it it it, it wasn't First a meeting. All, I don't understand. Listen here, I've been ushering on that other usher board for forty-seven years. I am the senior usher on that usher board, yes, and ma'am. I really don't. I've been trying to be nice about it, but I don't understand how y'all gonna have a meeting without me. That's first of all. What, 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 That's first of all. But, but, but I, now you gonna call here and tell me that you gonna have you having a meeting on me about me being nice? I'm always nice. Well, well, ma'am, that doesn't seem to be... I have a problem with that, son. Uh, How old is you? 27, ma'am. And they're going to send some boy to call me. You know, this don't make no type of... Okay. Child, what is it Can... that you want? What is it? Well, what that that's actually my call, ma'am, is that maybe we, uh, I figured if I would call and speak with you about the matter, that maybe we can get to some type of uh, uh, rectifying this situation to where Let's we see can... what we're going to rectify here. I'm going to rectify you calling me this time of night, talking about some meeting. 
this don't make no time. And I don't appreciate you calling me any time of night. Well, where's Bishop? I need to speak to Bishop. Bishop is the one that actually. I've been at this church for 47 years. I've been saved all my life. This don't make no type of sense. You calling me here with this mess. Now, see, y'all finna make me cuss. I'm trying to be a Christian, but y'all not gonna let me be a Christian, is you? You just gonna just gonna agitate me with this mess, well, telling me about something. Be nice. Well, ma'am, that that saying that they're having the problems people. when you're seating the people, and that's all that we're trying to get rectified. The the people don't want to sit down. They want to go over here. They want to go over there. They want to have the children running to and fro like a bunch of demons or wild heathens bucking around in the church like they ain't got no sense. And I'm not gonna have it in my section. My section is gonna be straight. And I, and I understand it. You know what, sister, sister. Uh, uh, I, I think if we did this, if you would do me a favor and hold your phone, and if you would just bow your head right now for me, maybe we can come to to, to, to get to get the man what, up. What am, I, what, am, what am I bowing my head for? Well, well, I ain't nothing if, on my floor because my floors are clean, baby. If, if, if we can my get floors you, is clean as hospital carpet. It don't make no sense for me to bow. What am I bowing my head for? If, if you could, if, maybe if you could talking. close your eyes, sister, sister. No, I'm me... not. Well, I was closed my eyes. See, you called me and woke me up out of my sleep with this mess. Talking about some meeting. I am very annoyed at this. And I don't appreciate it. And I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to speak to this. Now, this Father, thing. we ask don't that you no look kind of down thing. upon Sister K. We ask that you look down upon her well, right he now. Right now, here. asking that you put a Just smile on her face on Sunday morning. Asking that you put mm -hmm. some joy in her heart on Sunday morning. Yes, asking that you draw all the pain that she and anguish that she mm -hmm. might be mm -hmm. going through. Mm -hmm. Whatever demon there is inside, we ask that you draw that <laughs> demon out. We ask that you pull that demon away from Sister K. Right now, in your name, we ask all of these blessings to come. Because I don't appreciate this, boy. I don't even know who you is. All of my, who gave you my number? Uh, uh, Pastor gave me the number and asked me to call. I am, like I said, I'm Sean Williams. We haven't met yet. <laughs> and I am the new... Bishop don't, he, don't, he, don't, he don't act that way. And it's Bishop for the third time. I done told you, boy. Bishop, be respectful of the folks. See, that's what makes me angry. Let me, let me, let me say this right here, Sister... And maybe this will um, shed some light on things a little bit clearer. I'm tired of listening to you, boy. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by Sister <laughs> who is also a usher at the church at Fred <laughs> Missionary Baptist. Sister, yes, you wait till I see her Sunday. <laughs> this is a mess. We on the radio now? Y yes, yes. Yeah. This don't make no sense. Lord, him. this is embarrassing. Okay. Oh my God! This is embarrassing. You, you, this is the Steve Harvey show. Yes, ma'am. That, that's 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 my uncle. This, this is just a joke, though, ma'am. Hey, this, this is a little Tommy. Yes. <laughs> oh Lord, Amber. how you doing, Tommy? <laughs> how you doing, sister? <laughs> oh Lord, you, you... I am so. Em this is I am embarrassed. <laughs> I am embarrassed. Do you do you listen to the show? Every day. <laughs> I never would expect myself to be on there. Oh, Lord, y'all done made, oh, my God. Y'all done you, got me on this radio acting foolish. I, Lord, sister, sister, I sister, sister did this here to you. You, you mm, mm, mm. Well, how about if uh, y'all call me back and we get sister. <laughs> how about we do that? <laughs> we do, we, we, we'll do a prank on, on her bills, her paying a couple of bills. You know, because she's short a little. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> they got to say all her business. <laughs> what is the baddest radio show in the land? <laughs> Ooh, the Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> and, and look, Tommy and all them other little children, them little girls. Look at that girl, man. She is so cute. I love her. Miss Shirley. Hey. Sh Ooh, <laughs> Lord, this is so beautiful. Y'all, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. Okay, you Lord know. Lord Jesus. One of these church people going to f*** you up pretty <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, nephew. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment and national news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Rick Ross's net worth is going up thanks to his new million-dollar smile. The boss took a trip down to Columbia recently to secure a pearly white set of veneers, and they look good. Ricky Rose's Connect, Dr. Mario Montoya, is the one who handled the procedure. It lasted about six hours, and in the end, he walked out with 12 brand new teeth on the top and another 12 on the bottom. They look good. While something like this would normally cost around $10,000, uh, we hear he got a killer deal. 
killer deal. That's more and they than look 10 good. Grand. They look good. It costs you way got more than 10 teeth though. Though. That's way more than 10 grand. That's 500 a tooth. What the hell is Thousand, the dog. They done went up. This is about a grand or two. That's oh, a man. lot. That's a lot of money. Yeah. Well, maybe in Colombia, that's why he went, because they're a lot cheaper. Ooh, Colombia. Okay. <laughs> How much hell you I'm got to you go right to now, I can't go to Colombia to get a damn thing. Nothing. Right, that's I go down there, they're going to murder my ass. I ain't never coming down. <laughs> you can't go down there for nothing. I can't go to Colombia, ever. <laughs> I done had to quit it? drinking Colombian coffee ever since I said that one woman name wrong. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Miss Colombia. Mm-hmm. I've been on. They cussed me out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Woo. laughs> yeah, that oh, was. Yeah, but uh, back to Ricky Ross. Uh, I had to go yeah, get Rick me some Ross. teeth Ricky down Ross. in Miami. <laughs> That's about the closest That's about Columbia as close I can get. Yeah. 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 You don't gonna, need any. <laughs> I'm going to go get me some teeth in Mobile. <laughs> you got to stay, you can't go Alabama. to Alabama. Alabama, Alabama, baby. I'm going to go to Mississippi and get me the teeth. <laughs> Anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And if you go down there in the middle of Mississippi, you, you'd you have to, they, man, they had to round up so many people to get you a set of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> but you should see the before and after with Ricky Rose. They look good. Yeah, send me a picture of it. Yeah, okay. But anyway, so congratulations to him. And some really sad news from the music industry. Uh, Eddie Van Halen is one of rock's greatest guitarists. Yeah, he passed away yesterday from a variety of cancer-related causes. I mean, really sad. He was 65 years old. We all remember his hit song. Huh, what'd you say? Cool dude. You knew him, Steve? You met him? Not really. I just Mm -hmm. liked him. But you just yeah, liked just a him. Fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I liked yeah. him with yeah. long hair. And then when he got the fly shortcut, yeah. Uh, we remember his hit song, Jump, from back in 1984. Our oh. condolences going out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to the Van Halen family. Um, also, 80-year-old Johnny Nash, the singer of the big hit from the 70s. Remember, I can see clearly now. I can oh. see clearly mm-hmm. now. The mm-hmm. rain is gone. Yeah. Boom, jump. Yeah. Boom. He passed away from I can causes. see all the obstacles in oh. my way. Mm-hmm. Wow. 2020 is something else. Man. Yeah. 2020 it's a, I can no see clearly part. now the rain is gone. And it ain't kind of a year. It's going to be a bright. It's a feel good song. Bright, bright, sunshiny day. Yeah. I hope we can play oh. that right after Tuesday, November 3rd. I hope we can play that right there. I can see clearly now that Mm -hmm. Trump is gone. Come on. Oh, yes. Change the words. (laughs) I can see all those obstacles in my way. I can see clearly now the orange is gone. (laughs) It's going to be a bright. So again, our condolences going out to the Nash family. Soon as he leave COVID with me. All right, Steve, time now for today's headlines. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Ann Tripp. Oh, thank you very much, everybody. And here we go with the news. First of all, start out with the weather-related stuff. Louisiana bracing for the arrival of Hurricane Delta. And Governor John Bell Edwards says he wants people to be prepared. Even if there's a forecast of, of a slight weakening of the storm before landfall, understand it's a four now. I would ask people not to focus so much on that and just to prepare for a major hurricane. Delta is expected to, to uh, slam into Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula sometime today, really more like around right around Cancun, slam right in that bad boy. The number of coronavirus infected people surrounding the president of the United States continues to grow. Now at least 24 people have tested positive so far, including two members of the White House housekeeping staff, White House Press Secretary Kayleigh McEnany, and at least eight other people who attend a Rose Garden ceremony 10 days ago in honor of Supreme Court nominee Amy Coney Barrett and several others. Nevertheless, Trump's been telling his fans on Twitter not to be afraid of COVID-19, despite the fact that some 210,000 Americans have died from it. He doesn't tweet that part. So now Facebook has taken down a post in which Trump falsely claims that the coronavirus is less deadly than the flu. They took that down. 
Facebook says that Trump's message broke its rules against disseminating harmful disinformation. The president posted a similar message on Twitter, which puts it placed behind a warning label. Both social networks have been taking a firmer position against misinformation about the virus and other things. Basically, misinformation, of course, is a nice way of saying lies. In August, they removed a video of Trump claiming falsely that children are less susceptible to COVID. They took that bad boy down, too. Millions of Americans have been waiting for the White House and the congressional Democrats, meanwhile, to agree on a new multi-trillion dollar coronavirus relief package. Waiting a long time. However, after days of nowhere negotiations, President Trump tweeted that he'd ordered his people to stop pandemic relief talks with the Democrats until after the election. That's what he said. Well, he's flip-flopping now. He now says he's in favor of a new coronavirus economic package and he's got some numbers he'd like to see and he wants uh, Nancy Pelosi and the congressional Democrats to go along and agree with him on it. Yes, and you heard the top sad news. Rock guitarist Eddie Van Halen's died at age 65, but another... The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time now, guys, for a quick round of Ask the CLO. This is Steve's favorite segment. This one is from Tanya in Shreveport. She says, my husband and I moved back to his his hometown to help take care of his aging parents. He told me that their private duty nurse was an old friend of his. When I met her, she couldn't wait to brag about how she dated my husband for 10 years, and he's a good man and a great lover. I told my husband he was dead wrong for not telling me about his past with her, and I said either she goes or I go. He said I'm being childish and I could leave if that's the case. What should I do now? Wait a minute. That's they're they're married? Yes. And this woman said that? Yes. (laughs) Oh, you should have jumped on her ass. (laughs) (laughs) But her husband too. Yeah, he he let her walk into that. That ain't not cool at all. Mm-mm. 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 And then said that she is... could leave if she if she didn't like it. Oh yeah, let's, oh, oh, let's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause the nurse there. <laughs> wow. Hey, the, the nurse can come in there and take care of everybody, lady. Yeah, but the you, wife doesn't you, want to be around. You got to be kidding. Willie in North Carolina says, I'm 32 years old and I have a girlfriend that lives three hours away, but we see each other often. She loves to create drama and she accuses me of cheating all the time. I have a side chick and she knows about my girlfriend. (laughs) She's low stress and low maintenance, no drama. I like both women for different reasons. I have to let one of them go because it's getting hard to juggle them. I'm thinking about making the side chick my main girl. Will this work or will she always have a side chick mentality? Well, she won't have a side chick mentality if you make her the one. See, dog, you dating. You're not married and this your side chick. You dating and this your side chick. And you may have come to the conclusion that you're happier with the other girl. You young, make your decision now. Going both of them is going to further drama. Now, the, now the girl that you live three hours away from, she know about the side chick, but she still, and she giving you drama. She drama because she know about the other girl. But she's also, what's wrong with her? If you know about the other girl, but you allowing him to have it, well, then you wrong. No, the girlfriend doesn't know, but the side chick knows about the girlfriend. Oh, the okay. side chick knows about knows the about the girlfriend. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. the reason, but still, the reason she getting he getting drama from the girlfriend, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Cause she can feel something. She's sensitive. Mm-hmm. She always accuses you of cheating. She's that's right. right. Mm-hmm. She know yeah. what you're doing. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You just ain't been right. busted yet, but that's coming. Cool. <laughs> Thank mm-hmm. you, See, That's coming. Thank cool. you, CLO. Coming up in 34 minutes after the hour, our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, encourages Americans to vote for Joe Biden. We'll talk about it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, we love her so, shared a 24-minute video where she urged Americans to vote for Joe Biden. Mrs. Obama also criticized President Trump's handling of COVID-19, and uh, she accused him of stroking divisions among Americans. Take a listen, please. The knowledge that any of my fellow Americans is 
more afraid of me than the chaos we are living through right now, well, that hurts. It hurts us all. It is a, a heaviness that sits on our hearts. So I want to appeal for some empathy here too. I want everyone who is still undecided to think about all those folks like me and my ancestors, the moms and dads who work their fingers to the bone to raise their kids right, the teenagers who wear hoodies while working hard to get their diplomas, the millions of folks who look like me and fought and died and toiled as slaves and soldiers and laborers to help build this country. Put yourselves in our shoes for just a moment. Imagine how it feels to wake up every day and do your very best to uphold the values that this country claims to hold dear. Truth, honor, decency, only to have those efforts met by scorn, not just by your fellow citizens, but by a sitting president. Woo. Wow. 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 Okay. You know what? I, I think that it really embodies it. That really puts it in a capsule. You know, it's one thing, look, to know that racism exists. It's one thing to know that you can do your best and you can face opposition. Mm -hmm. we, we get that. If you're born a minority in this country, you understand that full well. But to get it thrown up in your face by a sitting president who mm -hmm. refuses to yeah. denounce white supremacy, a very simple thing, but he can't and he won't because they are his supporters. And he cares more about him getting their support than he does what's best for the nation. He could care less. He won't vote on the stimulus package, walked out and said he's not making a decision to after the election is over with. So what y'all do for money and rent and childcare and food that's shame. on y'all until I find out what's gonna happen to me. To me. Yes. To me. So until I know what's gonna happen to me. Go ahead. If he loses in November, what does that mean? He ain't gonna do nothing. Dog. November, if he loses January. in November, then he ain't done nothing no way. Right. And he's whatever. Y'all ain't vote for me. Lame duck at that point until yeah, January when he's Hey, look, out. man. Y'all yeah. didn't vote for me, so I don't care about your stimulus. Donald Trump doesn't care about the underprivileged because Donald Trump ain't ever been underprivileged. Right. Hello. Right. That's right. That's, That's right. so true. He has no empathy for people who are not in his own circle. Mm -hmm. Yep. Dog, mm -hmm. this dude is for rich people, period. He don't even know no poor people. He's never been poor. <laughs> He ain't got no black friends, man. He ain't got no black cabinet members but one. That just that's ridiculous, man. Look at his look at his circle. He ain't done nothing. And the only reason he picked Ben is because Ben, when he dropped out of the race early, when he saw he ain't had no chance, mm -hmm. he threw his support behind Trump. Mm -hmm. That's why Trump picked him. Mm -hmm. That's the only mm -hmm. reason. He's in, mm -hmm. he's in that position. If he that, had never threw cabinet, his support yeah. behind Trump, that would be no black people. Right. Just like the 200 judges he's appointed since he's been a sitting president, none of them are black either. He ain't opened his mouth not one time about Black Lives Matter, and every cause he takes up is against somebody of color. He ain't taking up one cause against a white group. He against the NFL players, he against Colin Kaepernick, he against the wall, he against DACA, he against Black Lives Matter. Anything with color on it, he against. This dude, yep. man, y'all tripping. Yep. Uh, 27 days left, Steve, until the November 3rd election. Please he got to vote. go. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. You just, you just kept it 100. He got to go. Man. Thank you, Steve. Your nephew is up next with today's prank phone call coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today. The subject, I never should have let him come inside. But right now, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in Ooh. a minute. But right now, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? LaRonda is my girl. Okay. LaRonda. LaRonda. <laughs> Is my girl. Let's go, cat dog. Uh -oh. 
Hello? This call will be recorded and monitored. I have a collect call from Ronnie an inmate. If you would like to accept this and future collect calls, please press 4. Hello? 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 Yeah, yeah, hello. I'm, I'm trying this? to... This is Ronnie. Ronnie I'm trying to reach uh, LaRonda. LaRonda? Yeah. La LaRonda. Do I have the wrong number? No, you, you got the right number, man. That's my wife. Uh, who is this? Okay, okay, okay. Hold, hold up now. This Ronnie right here. Now, right. I'm, I'm calling for LaRonda who, who, you know, who? Uh, that was my girl before I got locked up. I'm trying to... <laughs> Pump your brakes. Hold on, hold, hold on, man. Uh, we've been married for about two years, man. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. You might have the wrong number. Okay, hold up then. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait a minute. I know the <laughs> LaRonda ain't man. I know the <laughs> this ain't... What? Say, man, hold up, man. Wait a minute. LaRonda, LaRonda is married? Yeah, man. Hey, just in case you didn't hear me, LaRonda's married. We got a 16-month-old child, man, all right? And, and, and we've been married for two years. I don't know who you calling. I'm calling for LaRonda. I'm finna get up out this in six weeks. I've been, all I've, been, uh, I've been writing letters and all kind of stuff, sending them to her mama house. Whoa, whoa. You trying to tell me? You trying whoa, to send? Well, you been sending what to her mama house? I've been sending letters. I've been sending letters since the day I got locked down. Wait a I've minute, homie. When you been? How, how long has it been since you been sending letters, man? I've been locked down for five years. Five years, and I've been sending letters. I don't miss one week without sending something to Laurent. All right. What, what's her mama name then? Ain't, ain't her mama name Miss? Hold on, man. You been sending letters to my girl's mama for. For five years. Five uh, years. I'm finna get out in six weeks. I've been locked down right at five years. No, nah, man. She ain't got no letters from you, man. You, She ain't got no letters. Uh, We've been together for two years, man. I'm sorry to break your heart. Okay, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let me ask you this here, man. What, man? Hold up, because you you got me all f***ed up man, with this man. right here. Now, let me ask you this right here. How I know her mama name? How I know all this here, man? What what what, uh, what I'm trying to explain to you? I got the right person. I just I'm just blown away by you trying to tell me y'all married now. Yeah, we married now, happily married. Hey man, hey, you need to take your back to that cell, man, for real. Uh, hold up, cuz first of all, what you ain't finna do just come at me wrong. Now that what I ain't finna have now. Now I got a whole lot on my mind and a whole lot of stress. Now I'm gonna tell you this right here just to let you know how this finna to go. I now, don't go. Hmm? I'm finna to be up out of here in six weeks, and when I do get out, I am coming to see Laurent. Know that. I'm finna to come out there and... Brother, man, look. Hey, you up here calling me with this ignorant stuff, man. That's what probably got your tail in jail anyway. Hey, man. hey man, listen. You come up here, you gonna wind up getting both put up in the penitentiary, man, because I ain't playing about my wife, man. Brother, you just need to go and chill out. After you get out of brother, stay in somewhere, man. Look, don't, man. Don't bring... All right, man. Look, man, all I'm trying to do is... Hey, I don't care what you trying to do. Try to keep your... That's all I'm trying to tell you to do. So we don't both end up in the penitentiary, man. Or your might be in... You're going to end up in a grave if you keep testing me, man. I'm telling you, don't bring your here, bro. Just stay there. Relax, breathe, enjoy the your air, man. All right? That's all I'm saying, all right, man? That's it. Hey, 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 what you ain't finna to do is try to threaten me, fool. See, hey, I, yo, I, I, homie, you up here talking about... Keep your ass in man. Don't bring your ass here looking for no run. I'm, I'm coming to you. see my girl. That's my girl. You. We've been married for two years. I'm trying to tell you. You better take your ass on somewhere. You. We will shut this down. Who you think I'm you talking? You. Who you think you talking to? I'm talking to a that's in jail. Don't drop the up, you black. Look, man, I'm fixed to come home in six weeks, and I'm coming to see LaRonda, whether your like it or not, and I'm going to see her mama, Miss What you ain't going to do is get in the way of me and my girl, somebody I've been loving and writing letters to all this damn time I've been on lockdown. Man, bring your I will say it slow to you. Bring your and I swear to God, I will put your in the grave. That's where I'm going to put you, homie. Who you think? Bring your you better stay up in the penitentiary. I'm coming down there to see my girl, see her mama, and get my girl back. My girl leaving with me. You know, the only thing you're going to be seeing is the casket. Because I'm putting your ass in there, man. You, I'm telling you, you bring your ass out of I swear to God, man. You knock on my 
f***ing door if you want to. I, I'm telling you, man, go to a mama house. I'm putting your down, homie. Don't. I'm not playing with you, man. All right? That's my girl, man. That is my girl. I will up. You ain't finna do nothing to me. You ain't finna do nothing but release my girl over to me. That's what you finna to do. That's it. No, I'm gonna release the world in your if you come to this so That's what I'm gonna do. I'm telling you, man. I, boy, woo you, you keep around, man. I'll be waiting on you in six weeks. I'm gonna tell you that. I'll be waiting on you in six weeks. Bring your to my door. You won't be going nowhere else. I'm telling you that. You talking all this bad stuff on the phone. You ain't gonna do a thing when I get there, but give me my girl back. That's it. You, you ain't talking. You talking that behind the bars. You ain't shit. Listen, I got one more thing I need to say to you before I go back to my cell. Is you listening? Yes, I'm listening. This is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Devin. Wait, 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 wait. What the f Hold up, dog. Listen, this is Nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your boy Devin. Man, <laughs> y'all almost got him up. <laughs> I'm telling you, cuz, I was about to hit the jail, man. You I, might. I don't play that sh**. Y'all need to stop playing these motherfucking games, man. I'm gonna kick down and sh**. You fuck Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. I'm telling you, I was finna go down. I'm going down in flames. <laughs> Boy, woo. Woo. Uh, let me, I need to breathe off this Man, go get man. you a drink, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I need to get me some up in me, bro. I'm about to count down to six weeks on this <laughs> Whoa! Oh, <man. laughs> I have oh you would have got it. You would have got <laughs> it from him. Uh -huh. He got it in yeah. the middle and said, "Woo, woo!" I woo. love what he did there. Uh -huh. This boy was so <laughs> hot. <laughs> Five years, man. I've been, I've been sitting up in here mailing, mailing my. That's my girl. Mm -hmm. I swear to God. I swear to. God, if you come up in here, this your last stop. Mm -hmm. Oh, goodness. We both going. <laughs> we both going down. Woo. Oh, man. man. You would, he would have got you, Tommy. Because <laughs> he, he didn't he get the... Sure. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> With all that woo-woo in here. Yeah. 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 You That's one of my button. favorites. That dude yeah. right there. He was serious, man. Yeah. I'm not you playing with you Steve. about you my wife, man. <laughs> Dog, I'm not. We got a 16 month old. We've been together two years. Uh -huh. Dog, I'm not. Uh, homie, I'm telling you, don't. Go on back in your cell. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all he had for. Don't drop oh, the soap. <laughs> man, don't come <laughs> down here, man. man. You better get out here and enjoy the daylight and stuff like that, man. Go on, on about your business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See the trees and stuff, man. Go on, on. Uh, wow! Yeah. Keep it stupid, Woo. baby. That was, that was close, Tommy. Yeah, that, that was close. He even told right you there. you played too much. Yeah, yeah, too yeah. Much. that was close. <laughs> that was close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That yeah, was he's good. still not over it. The prank might be over, he but gonna, he's he not. He's gonna be all right, surely. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, nephew. Coming up next, it's the strawberry letter for today. The subject: I never should have let him come inside. We'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. There are 27 days left. 27 days left until the November 3rd election. Please go right now and get registered if you haven't registered already. Go to vote.org. It only takes a couple of minutes. Trust me, we've all done it. Uh, you can get your dates as to when you can early vote, and that's what we all want to do. Some people are already voting in their states. Um, you can go to vote.org and find out all the information you need, okay? Whew, please vote. Time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. Buggle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, Strawberry Letter. 
Subject, (laughs) I should have never let him come inside. Dear Stephen Shirley, I'm a 36-year-old woman who just found out that I'm pregnant by my co-worker's son. Her son is 24, and I met him at her birthday party earlier this year. We were standing around, and I heard him say he was going to smoke, and I told him that's just what I needed to get the party started. He had a bag of really good weed, so I asked him if he could bring me some later in the week. It's legal, but I've never bought it myself. He called me the next day and said he was ready to drop off my package. He also told me that I'm very sexy and I have nice lips. I told him he's handsome and had nice arms. I was flattered that this young man was flirting with me. He came over with my package and he was still flirting. He asked if he could come inside and smoke with me. Uh, I told him that I never smoke inside my house. He said if we smoked outside, my neighbors will see us smoking and having sex. I asked him what made him think we were going to have sex, and he said he could tell from the first time we met. I never should have let him come inside. We smoked a lot of weed, and we had a lot of crazy good sex that day. It went on for months until we got careless and stopped using protection. When I got pregnant, he flipped out and asked me to terminate the pregnancy. I refused because this may be my last chance at being a mother because of my age. He forbade me to tell his mother about us having sex and me being pregnant. He is an adult and he needs to act like one. I plan to tell his mom, my coworker, that I'm pregnant by him. How should I start the conversation with her? Please advise. Okay, girl, hold up, okay? Just wait a minute. Uh, Please just don't go up to her and say, good morning, how you doing? By the way, I'm pregnant by your son. You cannot do it that way, okay? You might get jumped on because his mom is going to be shocked. I'm telling you right now, she's going to be furious with you. She's going to be mad at him too, but mostly you because you're older and you should know better. You're 36. He's 24. She's gonna and you guys work together. She's gonna feel like you betrayed her by going behind her back. She's gonna feel like you took advantage of her young son. Again, you're 36, he's 24. This is just as much your fault as is his because you say you guys got careless and did it without protection. I mean, how high, how high were you that you couldn't stop for a moment? just to put on a condom. Uh, Naturally, he flipped out because at 24, that's what he wants to do. Uh, Smoke weed, flirt, and have sex, okay? As far as I'm concerned, not all 24-year-olds do that, of course, but that's what he wants to do. You didn't mention in here that he had a job or anything like that. As far as I'm concerned, when you told him, you told the right person, though. You told the person you needed to tell. He is the father. Uh, you, You didn't get the reaction you wanted from him, so now you're mad and you want revenge. I agree. His mom should know eventually, because it's going to be her grandchild, but not right now. I, I think you're, you're only telling her right now to get back at him. I think maybe um, that, um, you know, you, you think that she can make him responsible, you know, be a good father for the grandchild. You think if she talks to him and, and he doesn't want any part of it, he already told you, he asked you to terminate the pregnancy. I think right now you're you're in a world of trouble and you need to concentrate on the baby you'll be having, all right? He'll come around as far as what he has to do to take care of the baby, maybe, but right now that's what you need to concentrate on, Steve. Wow. Wow. What a letter. This letter right here, I should have never let him come inside. 36-year-old woman. Finds out she pregnant by her co-worker's son. Now, the dude is 24. I met him at her birthday party earlier this year. Well, you're not even getting invited back next year to the party. (laughs) You think? For damn sure. (laughs) Now, this I see, I read a lot of stuff in these letters. Mm -hmm. We standing around, and you heard him say he was going to smoke, and then... And you told him that's just what I needed to get the party started. He had a bag of really good weed, so I asked him if he could bring me some later in the week. Okay, now, you you see how she left this gap out? There's, uh-huh. It's a lot of stuff about this lady's letter right here. Mm-hmm. If you just standing around and just what you needed, he had a bag of really good weed, 
How'd you know it was good? Y'all went somewhere and smoked. Tell her all of it now. <laughs> and then you ask him if he could bring you some later in the week. Now, here she come being righteous again. It's legal, but I've never bought it for myself. Right. So Playboy called you the next day, say he ready to drop off your package. He told me I'm sexy and I got nice lips. I told him he handsome, he had nice arms. You was flattered that the young man was flirting with you. He came over with your package and was still flirting. Then he said, can he come inside and smoke with me? I told him I never smoke inside my house. Where you smoke? <laughs> if you don't smoke in your house, where do you smoke? You ain't Hold got no thought. kids. You ain't married. Where do you smoke if you don't smoke in the house? Quit lying. Hold that thought, Steve. We'll have part two of your response uh, coming up at 23 minutes after the hour. Lady. <laughs> Subject of today's strawberry letter, I never should have let him come inside. We'll get back into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, here we go, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, I never should have let him come inside. Wow. Y'all, y'all, this lady in this letter, 36-year-old, met this 24-year-old at her co-worker's birthday party. She's pregnant by him now, which means she ain't invited to the party next year. <laughs> Now, y'all standing around. You heard him say he was going to smoke. You told him that's just what you need. He had a bag of really good weed, so I asked him if he could uh, bring me some later in the week. You invited him over. You knew what you was doing after you smoked the weed. You asked him if he could bring it over. Then you said it's legal, but I've never bought it myself. How much weed you to smoke? You so good at knowing what good weed is versus bad weed, but now you're trying to tell us you ain't never bought none your damn self. But it's legal, though. Lady, stop. <laughs> In order for you to know it's good weed, you'd have had to smoke a lot of weed. Mm. Mm. Come on. He called me the next Bang. day, said he ready to drop off my package. He told me I'm very sexy and I got nice lips. That's what you wanted to hear. You told him he was handsome and had nice arms. That's why you asked him to drop the package off. Mm -hmm. I was flattered that this young man was flirting with me. He came over with my package and he was still flirting. He was flirting because you was flirting. I love the way he you didn't said stop that. with just your nice lips. He told you some other stuff and you said something else other than about his arms. Ooh. Ain't nobody just still flirting by their damn self. <laughs> he asked if he could come inside and smoke with me. I told him I never smoke inside my house. Lady, there's too many lies in this damn letter now. <laughs> she left out a whole lot of stuff, too. If you don't smoke in your house, where do you smoke? In her car. In her car. Oh, she Probably. smokes in the car? Over her friend's house? <laughs> he said if we smoked outside, outside. your mm-hmm. neighbors would see us smoking and having sex. I asked him what made him think we was going to have sex. Mm -hmm. See, right there, when you asked him that, it was already on your mind. Normally, if you wasn't having no sex, boy, if you don't drop this weed off and get your young ass out of here. (laughs) Exactly, (laughs) Steve. Right. Talk about some damn sex outside. Boy, if you don't drop this weed off and get your young ass out of here. Uh Yes. But that didn't happen. Right. Mm -hmm. What makes you think? You want to know what he's thinking. We gonna have sex, and he said he could tell from the first time we met. I never should have let him come inside. You damn sure didn't, but you invited him over there, didn't you? You already had plans of him coming inside when you invited him over. Lady, don't play with me. We smoked a lot of weed. Now you wanna blame it on the weed? Yeah. How much? Wasn't smoking no weed when he was standing at the door with them nice arms with that bag in his hands. The decision that was made to have sex was before the weed. Mm-hmm. You let him in after he told you y'all was going to have sex. You let him in to have sex. Don't be talking about we smoked a lot of weed. We had a lot of crazy good sex that day. It went on for months. It went from a month to day, to days to a month. <laughs> what? Yeah. yeah. Until we got careless and stopped using protection. What you mean weed? Mm-hmm. You're a grown woman here. You ain't know we got careless. She could have taken a moment. You did it without the protection. When I got pregnant, then she just throw this in here. And, and until we got careless and stopped. When I got pregnant, he flipped out and asked me to terminate the pregnant. 
I refuse because this may be my last chance of being a mother because of my age. That's why you got careless. This woman is pregnant on purpose. Grown ass people don't accidentally get pregnant. You know if you have sex without protection, you know what happens. This is basic health class in this eighth grade. If you have sex, see, the little sperm swims up the channel with the tail on it, just wiggling and wiggling, and it's millions of them, but it's just one egg, and they be fighting at the egg, at the dope, and then one of the little millions of sperm go into the egg. Remember that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's what the hell happened. <laughs> You knew you could be pregnant by doing like this, and you didn't get this. Didn't happen one time. Oh, You've had unprotected oh, sex with once? this boy quite a bit, and then asked you to terminate. I ain't finna terminate this. This is my last chance to be a mother because exactly. my age. Then he told me not to tell his mother about us having sex and me being pregnant. He's an adult, and he need to act like one. Nothing in this letter says he was much of an adult, except he has some crazy game for you. Right. Told you you was going to have sex, said you had nice lips. You mm-hmm. fell for it. I plan to tell his mom, my coworker, that I'm pregnant. Ooh. How should I start the conversation with her? When I come back, part three, I'm going to show you how she going to introduce to this lady that she pregnant by her 12-year <laughs> younger son than her. It's going to be so good. All right. Post your comments on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM on Instagram and Facebook and check out the Strawberry Letter podcast on demand. Now, coming up at 46 minutes after the hour, you heard Steve part three of today's Strawberry Letter subject. I never should have let him come inside, okay? (laughs) Part three coming up right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we are, part three. This letter was so good, we had to do a three-parter. The subject, I never should have let him come inside. Go well, ahead, yeah. Steve. Mm-hmm. You know, 36-year-old woman messing with the 24-year-old son of her co-worker. Mm-hmm. She gets pregnant. They smoking weed and let him in the house. Now, she upset because she wants to have the baby. He flipped out, told her to get rid of the pregnancy. Oh. She said this is her last chance. Which lets me know she had this baby on on purpose. Yeah, she needed so. a way to have a baby, and she found mm-hmm. this young stud with the nice arms, and now she's having a baby. So here was the question. I played, now he done told her, don't tell my mama about us having sex <laughs> and, to and the baby. Yeah. He need to act like an adult. You wasn't. This little dude right here, he ain't ready for none of this here. You talking about he don't want no family? He 24. He wants to smoke weed and have sex. He want to have smoke weed and have sex. Shirley said that in her response. Absolutely correct. So now here's a question. I'm planning on telling his mom, my coworker, that I'm pregnant by him. How should I start the conversation with her? All right, here we go. So Shirley, mm-hmm. you're the coworker. Okay. I'm the pregnant lady, and we talking. Okay. Hey, um, hey Geraldine. <laughs> Geraldine. <laughs> what? Hey, Betty. <laughs> Girl. How you doing? What's Girl, going on? I'm all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know... <sighs> Girl, I don't know where to start. What's you know, wrong with uh, you? Why are you blowing and everything, girl? Because of your party. That was months ago. I know, but that was, girl, it was so crazy in there. It was just crazy. It was at the craziest party I ever been to. What? It was just a party. No, nah, it was crazy, though. It was, it was crazy birthday. the way it yeah. was. It wasn't so, just, it was your birthday, but it was yeah. crazy. Girl, they had some... Uh, what, it was what? going weed in there and everything. What? I, you know I don't your smoke son, weed, Betty. I know, but My, your son smoke weed. I, I smoke. DeMarcus. What? I smoke DeMarcus. DeMarcus. Yeah, DeMarcus smoking. Now, he bought me some weed over to my house. You know, and sometimes I, he comes in and his eyes are a little red, but I just Yeah, when well, he, he came tired. in my house, his, his eyes was red and his underwear. What? What? What happened? What? What? How do you know about my sons? Wait a minute now, Betty. How do you know about Demarcus's underwear? It's cause he bought the weed over with oh, his where? arms out. Betty, what you talking about? And said I Girl. had big lips. What? Told me my lips was pretty. And <laughs> I told him his arms was cute. And... But you, would you get to the point? I gotta get back to work now. Yeah, you. What, you what finna you be a grandmother. <laughs> 
No. <laughs> That's how she told her. <laughs> See you at lunch tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Wear your mask. <laughs> Wear your mask. Wear your mask. All right. Ta da. All right. Can we have baby shower at your house? <laughs> hey, listen. Uh, we'll be back at the top of the hour uh, with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Well, Donald Trump went on Twitter and he continued to downplay the severity of COVID-19. The president, who was aggressively treated by a team of doctors at the hospital over the weekend, again equated COVID with the common flu and told Americans they need to just live with it. He tweeted, flu season is coming up. Many people every year, sometimes over 100,000, and despite the vaccine, die from the flu. Are we going to close down our country? No, we have learned to live with it, just like we are learning to live with COVID. In most populations, far less lethal. Twitter restricted the post, putting it behind a, a, a warning about misinformation. There was so much wrong information in that tweet Man. about the 100,000 yeah. people. Facebook and, too. I heard yeah, Facebook, Facebook too. removed a similar post from the president yeah. on its platforms. And we all know, I mean, this is so sad. More than 210,000 Americans have died from COVID so far. Uh, The CDC says between 12,000 and 60,000 people die from the flu each year. Okay? Idiot. Mm. Yes. (laughs) What what are you doing? I'm I'm not listening to a damn thing he say. Just about all the people in his circle have it. It's yeah. amazing that the vice president doesn't have it. I mean, they're going to debate t- tonight, so. Yeah. <sighs> and now they're going to have a plexiglass in between mm-hmm. them with the debate because at first Pence didn't, didn't want it. Didn't mm-hmm. want it, but now he didn't want to be behind the glass. Right. Huh? What'd you, you say, you Pence didn't want to be behind the glass. He won't be behind the glass. No. no. Oh, no, for no, the debate no. tonight. No, no. If he wasn't, if he didn't Pence, be in a whole yeah, if he didn't like, lucky I'm even be talking to his ass. Thank yeah, you, right, Steve. Right, You've been around right. that. No, sir. Get uh-uh. this hazmat right. suit on in here. Yeah, and see, <laughs> right. that's the only um, vice, presidential de- vice presidential debate there will be. There's only one. If I was Kamala, I'd come out there in just an orange suit. <laughs> hazmat with covered just up. Vest on, Mast everything. Hair tank. Yeah. Come out with yes. that fumigator and the whole time he's yeah. talking, just have it on. His, just it just on. Be, his whole debate be just in fall. <laughs> <laughs> Looking like an astronaut. I'd be an astronaut. astronaut. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah th- that's crazy. That is really, really Yeah, crazy. he's been around the president. Yeah, He's and you know you have. All your assistants, yeah. Secret Service, your staff. Mm-hmm. Come on, All man. Yeah, this is ridiculous now. And then, if you, you know. are an American and you're listening to what he's saying about COVID, you, is something wrong with you? Mm-hmm. This man has at his disposal the very best doctors in the United States. He had nine doctors around him yeah. Yeah. protecting yeah. him. Right. You go to the hospital, you ain't even going to be able to get seen. <laughs> right, because everybody's You go with to the, the hospital, mm-hmm. there's no antibiotic cocktail for you. Right. That costs money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's know-how. And most people do not have that available at a hospital. And right. your health care, Medicaid, whatever, don't carry. It doesn't cover experimental drugs like this guy was able to take. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's That's trying right. to get rid of it. He's trying to mm-hmm. get rid of Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. So mm-hmm. now during the pandemic, you won't even have health care. Right. Wow. No. He has the But best. he's taken care of. His family's taken yes. care of. All the politicians are taken care of. Oh, man, Everybody this is so high, crazy. And that White House is taken care of. Yeah. <laughs> they all if Kamala treat. Harris doesn't say it is because of you all's severe neglect in yeah. The Netflix. White House yep, yep, that yep. we, for the first time, have to perform behind glass walls. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But we'll isn't a debate. wall your specialty to be? I need to be running that. Well, I'm telling you, yeah. bring up walls all night long. Boy, I'll be up in there. Walls, mask, everything. Your sick <laughs> ass. Come, you better not. If he cough, <laughs> if he cough, I crack the plexiglass with my microphone. <laughs> Get out here, everybody out. Here come the COVID. <laughs> Yeah. Boy, <laughs> I yeah, come I out mean, to music. 
Biden. Biden COVID is here. <laughs> <laughs> COVID is here. Like champ, the champ. Yeah, the champ is here. COVID is here. here. Yeah. All right. Coming up, we'll have more of today's trending stories on the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve. So you have some uh, special equipment you, you're you going to bring for the uh, second well, presidential debate. Well, I'll do the debate. debate. If I'm Biden, uh-huh. I'll go and do the debate because he's going to okay. whoop his ass again anyway because the president uh-huh. don't know how to debate because he get mad and he's stupid. Right. So, oh, so you're not talking about the vice president debate tonight. You're, you're talking, talking about, about the, the next presidential one. Oh, no, the next ahead. presidential debate. Because Biden said if he still got COVID, he ain't going to do it. But I'll right. do it, though. We're just <laughs> both, would... all of us. We, I got a couple things I'm going to have requested. What? And so I'll do that? it, and I ain't even going to tell you. Both of us is going to be sitting up in them germaphobic SUVs that you was riding around the circle in at the hospital. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You get in okay. your SUV, I get in mine, we pull up on stage. And mm-hmm. when I'm talking, your mic is cut off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. As, as I like it should be. I like uh-huh. it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Next thing I'm going to do, uh-huh. I, could, I could do it this way. Mm-hmm. You debate, but you have to sit in a glass cubicle oh, with oh, a top God. on it. <laughs> he sealed it. You know, <laughs> kind of like an aquarium. You know how you go, like, go to the pet store and see a turtle? Yes, yes, yes. Donald Trump asked me an aquarium. Okay. And then uh, the only other thing is, if the whole time you talking, I got a can of Lysol shooting it <laughs> directly in your mouth. <laughs> oh, but I do it my damn self. I'm going to have to be close. Uh. I'm going to have to be like a foot and a half away. But the whole time you talking, I, <laughs> Lysol dead in the mouth. Yes. And if you cough, the debate is over. <laughs> We'll be back with more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and some trending news at 33 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Our forever first lady, Michelle Obama, we love her so, shared a 24-minute video where she urged Americans to vote for Joe Biden. Mrs. Obama also criticized President Trump's handling of COVID-19, and uh, she accused him of stroking divisions among Americans. Take a listen, please. The knowledge that any of my fellow Americans is more afraid of me than the chaos we are living through right now, well, that hurts. It hurts us all. It is a a heaviness that sits on our hearts. So I want to appeal for some empathy here too. I want everyone who is still undecided to think about all those folks like me and my ancestors, the moms and dads who work their fingers to the bone to raise their kids right, the teenagers who wear hoodies while working hard to get their diplomas, the millions of folks who look like me and fought and died and toiled as slaves and soldiers and laborers to help build this country. Put yourselves in our shoes for just a moment. Imagine how it feels to wake up every day and do your very best to uphold the values that this country claims to hold dear. Truth, honor, decency, only to have those efforts met by scorn, not just by your fellow citizens, but by a sitting president. Wow. Wow. You know what? I I think that it really embodies it. That really puts it in a capsule. You know, it's one thing, look, to know that racism exists. It's one thing to know that you can do your best and you can face opposition. Mm -hmm. We, We get that. If you're born a minority in this country, you understand that full well. But to get it thrown up in your face by a sitting president who Mm -hmm. refuses to denounce white supremacy. A very simple thing, but he can't and he won't because they are his supporters. And he cares more about him getting their support than he does what's best for the nation. He won't vote on the stimulus package, walked out and said he's not making a decision to after the election is over with. So what y'all do for money and rent and childcare and food that's on y'all until I find out what's going to happen to me. To me. So until I know what's going to happen to me. Go ahead. If he loses in November, what does that mean? He ain't going to do nothing. Dog, if he loses January. in November, then he ain't done nothing no way. Right. And he's Whatever. He's y'all dog ain't vote for me. L. Lame duck at that point mm-hmm. until yeah, January when he's Hey, look, man. Yeah. Y'all didn't vote for me, so I don't care about your stimulus. 
Donald Trump doesn't care about the underprivileged because Donald Trump ain't ever been underprivileged. Coming up, it'll be our last break of the day. Last break of the day. And of course, Steve Harvey, the one and only, will have some closing remarks for us at 49 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we go. This is our last break of the day. And you know, tonight is the vice presidential debate. Senator Kamala Harris and Vice President Mike Pence will face off in Salt Lake City, Utah on uh, tonight. The debate will run 90 minutes. Yeah, Come on, Kamala. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The bait will hey, run man, 90 you minutes. Something. You're going to find out how bright this woman is. Oh, yeah. Oh, this yeah, woman yeah, is yeah. razor sharp, and she is ready. Because, mm-hmm. see, Pence is going to be a lot more debate worthy. Mm-hmm. He's going to be the direct opposite of Donald Trump. Oh, yeah. But he's going to talk about what Trump did, but Kamala going to punch holes in it. Mm-hmm. It's, go- it's going to be pretty to see, man. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, uh, 90 minutes long. Pence and Harris will be seated like 12 feet apart. They will have plexiglass in front of them. Thank God. Uh, Susan Page from USA Today will be the moderator. They're going to talk about uh, the struggling economy, the Supreme Court, uh, the coronavirus, of course, and racial unrest. Okay, so don't forget, Steve, 27 days left until the November 3rd election as well. You know what? Listen, um, this election is so important, everybody. Um, we're dealing with a, a man who isn't really well. And I don't care what anybody says, man. Uh, it's not that he's sick. His sickness began long before COVID. What's really wrong with him? It even goes deeper than racism. And that's what I want to share with everybody. Not only is this man racist, it goes deeper than that. This man is privileged. Privileged people are scary, man. Because if you listen to them carefully, it goes beyond racism to a group of a very, very select few. And it doesn't matter what color you are. If you're not amongst the privileged, he's not talking to you about you. He's not coming through for you. And he's not defending you. So let's look at this president for what he is. He's an elitist. He's in a very, very special privileged group. The sad part about the American voters is, is they like people like that because they want to become privileged themselves. But the sad part about it is, man, being privileged is more than just a conversation. It's about thoughts. It's about ideals. It's about policy. So let me help you understand something. Just in case you're thinking that this man right here is just racist, he's not. This man is privileged. Number one, he comes down with COVID. He gets out of the hospital. He's still not out of the woods. He's still infectious. He still has COVID. And he tweets to the American people, this is nothing but like the common flu. Hundreds of thousands of people die from the flu. Let's just live with it. You can't say that to the 210,000 people who have died with it. You can't say that to the millions of people who have been infected by it. And not to mention of the 210,000 people who died, the millions of those relatives who were affected by the death of that 210,000. How you want them to live with it? Just deal with it. It's nothing more than the flu. Because this man, as an elitist, as a privileged person, has the finest medical team in the world around him. Nine doctors. He's taking experimental drugs. He's, he's doing antibacterial, antibiotic cocktails. This guy got everything at his fingertips. If you go to the hospital, you're not going to get that. Ain't no nine people coming in there to check on you. When we go to the hospital, we got to hope we can find a respirator, hope we can get a ventilator, hope we can get a bed, hope we can get some service, hope we can get waited on like we're in a damn crowded-ass restaurant. 
No, nah, man, they in here for their life. They ain't in here trying to order fettuccine. But, man, y'all listening to this dude right here? Then he walked out of the stimulus meeting and said he's not voting on the stimulus package until after the election. So guess what? He don't give a damn what happened to y'all non-elite, non-privileged people until he find out what he get. If I'm the president, then we'll go back to the table. And if I ain't the president, I don't give a damn what happened to y'all. How y'all ain't getting that message, man? You sitting up in here thinking, man, this dude is just racist. He worse than that. He's a racist and a privileged person. He's in an elite group, man. Y'all not listening, man. He don't care about nothing but Donald Trump and Donald Trump winning. And he will say and do anything to get a victory, including step over you. So all of you Trump supporters, let me tell you something. He don't give a damn about you unless you say you give a damn about him. You could be a white supremacist, or you could be anything, or you could be an ill-advised senator, or you could be in the Republican Party. He told y'all a long time ago he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue and they would follow him anyway because he didn't found the trick. Align yourself with the Republican Party, pretend like you're one of them, and they'll vote for you because what I'm finding out, it is party over country. Party over people. You got the wrong dude in the White House, man. He got to go. For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 